anyone can hear us. We're just trying to work out what's going on. Okay, um, so we're having trouble getting the video to work at the moment. So um, I'll just give you a, a, update, a, a breakdown of what's happening. We are trying to do a question and answer on the webinar system. We're very new to this, hence there's no camera. Um, why are we doing this? Uh, we regularly get um, phone calls or emails um, asking us questions. and um, we thought we'd do this and so the, the uh, uh, information will go not just to the one person and that can uh, help to spread the information. Um, still trying to get a video going but uh, I might start already. Um, got a question here. So the idea is people uh, give us the send we'll um, give them information to say that they're on such and such a date the webinar on. Um, okay, so we've had a, a question here uh, from Katrina. Um, my half acre yard is infested almost totally with kaiku and to a lesser extent cooch grass. I have an orchard area midway and an annual garden close to the house, but trying to keep them clear of kaiku is a nightmare. What can I do to minimise pulling out or needing to dig? out endless piles of up to two metre long stolons that reinvade every garden bed. Not so young anymore, it requires a lot of time, too much energy. So my uh, um, comments on that, so there's, you've got a garden area and a orchard area. Um, the garden area is going to be probably the first area to address, it's going to be um, more necessary, the orchard can sort of function, but the garden can't with the kaiku. Um, what I would be doing is between the garden and the orchard, I would be making sure there's a, a, a permanent edge so that it's not going to reinfest from the orchard area. The, so um, whether this is a physical barrier with a, a, a certain type of uh, non-penetrable fence, or whether it's a uh, vegetative barrier, um, even if it's some heavy logs, sleepers put down, uh, and then you've got um, plant material in between. Um, so that, yeah, of, uh, we use um, several plants that can help. I, I use a lot of um, vetiver grass. Vetiver grass is very hardy plant, and it's, uh, is quite vigorous and stable and that helps, but I'd still be putting in a good solid edge, which I'd just use logs. Um, so once you've got that edge, just so you're not getting the reinfestation, then in the garden or even in the orchard, I would be sheet mulching. Uh, that would be the way that I would address um, the, the plant kaiku and the cooch. The sheet mulching you can do if you have access, um, usually you get access from the store or somewhere where they have lots and lots of cardboard boxes. So you just get get the cardboard boxes and lay the cardboard boxes down even too deep. Probably I would do too deep for, for these grasses because they're quite vigorous runner grass. Uh, and overlap them a good third, even not even a half, um, so that there's a good physical barrier. So you're laying these down over the top of the grass and uh, doing a large area at a time from an edge and on you work your way out and leave this for a period of time for the grasses to die and uh, then start gardening afterwards. Uh, so in the garden you'll be gardening, that's, that's what you'll be replacing because you need to replace with something uh, when you pull it out in the, the plant out in the orchard, you need to be replacing Otherwise, it, it's just going to come back again. So uh, start from an edge and work work uh, an area at a time. Take uh, it might take six months to to kill this grass, and then um, move start and get some more uh, cardboard and move further out. Um, or you can use carpet. I've used carpet, a good heavy solid carpet, and the carpet then can be 
can be dragged a bit further out and you, you're moving your edge and then plant up behind. Um, a plant that I like to plant in the in the uh, food forest or orchard area is pinto peanut. The pinto peanut is, um, is going to be a, a nitrogen fixer and a really good ground cover. Any ground covers that you find that are, are quite beneficial. Um, uh, that's probably the way that I would address it. In the in the garden, it means you're going to have to shut down some garden beds, um, and give them six months to, to for the the weed to die out, and then as you move know, across, it might be quicker than six months, might take longer than six months, depending on how thick it is um, and the season. I, I would think my answer for that sheet mulching is probably the best way to address. Okay, Katrina, hopefully that helps you out with that then. Now, looks like you haven't got the camera still working. No, no, Maybe no it's probably in the background, you haven't actually activated it yet. Looks like the camera there, but no camera there. Okay, um, I have another question here. I'm only new to permaculture and own a half acre semi rural property with an existing house. How do I start with permaculture on the property? I'm semi-retired with time on my hands, but not much money. One of the things we usually say with permaculture is where do you start? Uh, you start at your back door and you work your way out. That's uh, a bit of a generalization, I guess, because there's air, different areas that you probably want to start at the same time, but um, what that sort of means is you're starting from an edge again. Uh, the similar question uh, that I just addressed. So when you start from your back door, you work your way out. Uh, and from your your house and and the area close to your house, we call zone one and your garden area. Don't have your your main garden too far away from your house because you need close access to that. So um, that's where I'd be starting, and I'd be starting with an introduction to permaculture type books. Um, Bill Mollison's introduction to permaculture is fantastic, and there's others very similar that uh, just explain things a little bit differently. Um, another area to start is um, so I would be doing chickens. We normally would do chickens uh, in that size, semi-rural for sure. I, I, I prefer to have chickens part of the system. They're very beneficial to your system. So you can start cycling your nutrient. Um, have the chickens in a in an ideal location. This is going to take a bit of design to know where this is. Permaculture is about design. And so to, to know where the right place is, you're going to have to read those books or talk to someone or get a consultation done so that you can have a good idea where to put the chickens. I like higher uh, upslope from from my growing system so, so that any nutrient coming out of that system is coming down to your growing area. Um, okay, that's probably a quick answer to that. Um, There's, it can be a bit daunting when there's so many things that you want to address. You'll read the books faster than you can implement. But um, that's why we say start at the back door. Uh, so in every and every time that you're going, getting more advanced in your establishment, you're maintaining. You can maintain on the way through uh, from the back door with your your, your picking greens or whatever that might be um, close to the uh, the back door. Uh, your back. When we say back door, it could be your front door where your garden might be in the, the winter sun side. But um, yeah, good luck with that um, and see how you go. Thank you. The next question we have here. I live in a small inner city apartment and love the idea of permaculture in a small space. Okay, um, so the, the ways of it, 
what permaculture is about is, is supplying your needs for yourself to become self-sustainable or self-reliant. So you, you, you're looking after your needs. And so the first thing we're going to look at is our food and greens are very quick growing and, and um, needed part of our diet. And so in a small space that works quite fine. So if you're in an apartment, um, if you've got a balcony or a paper, uh, maybe you're going to need to do pot plants, um, plants in pots in there. Another idea is uh, the polystyrene broccoli boxes, which are discarded at the They can be utilised very well to make gardens in, and you can have your balcony or your, your patio area um, with these boxes. Um, drainage from these boxes is an issue. Um, if you, you can't have water so much on your balcony, just be cautious of that. Um, uh, you can have holes in the bottom of the boxes to drain completely, and there might be a drain hole on the balcony there, so there's not a problem. Uh, you can also use the polystyrene box. We, we call them broccoli polystyrene box. You can also use them to as a wicking type bed. So you don't put holes in the bottom, you put a hole a certain distance up the side, and then there's a, a permanent amount of water in the bottom so that um, that minimises your watering. You just uh, look into wicking beds and that will help you out there. Uh, now, vertical gardens are very, very popular in, in uh, and very, very um, economical and effective in a city area, in a small area. Uh, so you're doing vertical gardens and there's lots of different ways that we can do that. Uh, so you're using the vertical space. Um, it comes back to, again, of getting your sunlight and, and uh, and that to work because we need things we need water and sunlight, and um, so to have that works quite well is something you going to need to look at. Guy, do you have any comments on my vertical? Okay, guys, guys, be content with that simple answer. Um, hopefully, uh, if uh, you need more, just um, yeah, could send us another question. Okay, that was our quick uh, three questions. Hopefully we'll get more next time and uh, hopefully uh, they're helping people out there. Um, so sorry that we don't have video. We'll see what's going on with this for next time and uh, see if we can get out to work. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so we're, we're um, Tom and Zaya from, from uh, we're on the Sunshine Coast of Queensland and uh, we've got a small property here um, of about 10 acres that we do multi lots of things happening here and uh, we also have students and volunteers um, where we so we can teach we live permaculture the whole property is all about permaculture and also um, Zaya is very um, passionate about health so we grow the healthiest food that we can with the healthiest system that we can put together and then we process the food the, the, the produce to make wonderful food and then in a done in a very way for health. So um, it's it's a very large part of our function here is is that the whole system um, from eating to from the garden right through and the whole system. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tom, signing out. Till next time. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye.